I am in the new Opel Crossland with two people who really love the car even before I did. Why do you like it? It looks pretty good. Uh huh. So looks is the start. Crossland is a German car going by the badge, but it's made in Spain. Now, ever since Stellantis has come into the picture or can come into being, uh, the whole of Europe has come together to make cars, different models uh, for different brands of Stellantis. So, uh, it is technically a German car. So, how is it right? It's driven by a 1.2 litre engine, made it to a six-speed transmission. Not a big engine, you know, which we are used to in this region, but 110 horsepower and 205 newton meters make it pretty good enough. And uh, the smiles come, especially when the fuel economy figures turn up here. Like I can see it's 15.8. Now what they promise is something above 17, but 15.8, 16 is a good uh, space to be in. But, uh, well, I'm on a highway drive, probably in a mix you get closer to 12, but even that is a good feeling. Don't expect the pleasure of German accuracy or precision in the drive, now that's all. Uh, because when there is a slight intermittent feeling when it comes to the power delivery and also uh, when it comes to the handling as well, um, it is good enough. You can actually feel the torque build up on the steering. Uh, so, it's a compact car. Now, see, I, I think I should, I should be fair. I'm comparing it with probably the drive, the pleasure that the Opel Corsa delivered on my drive. But, uh, well, this is a compact crossover and it drives well. A couple of other things that aid efficient driving is one, the steering. It's quite right-sized, I mean, compact and nice to grip. Uh, and the dashboard, it's kind of, you know, they've placed, they designed it to be a little lower than usual. And that favors a shorter driver who can see ahead without any disturbance. Good idea. In other driver assistance features, you have LED headlamps and auto dimming rear view mirrors. Opel Crossland gives you control over the radio, telephone and cruise control on the steering wheel and it also gives you voice command. To begin, say a command after the tone. Tune to 96.7 FM. Tuned to 96.7 FM. You can actually tune into different radio stations but navigation control isn't available or setting the navigation isn't available in this country. To begin, say a command after the tone. Navigate to Al Qudra Street. Sorry, for this country, it's not possible to add destinations by voice. All that you need to know comes up on the little driver information panel here and even the navigation controls, navigation directions can be seen there. Plus, there is a check button. You press it and the computer runs a test and tells you if uh, the tire pressures are okay or if there is any other fault. Good stuff. I keep saying that an armrest is a desirable luxury in a compact cab SUV or sedan. Now this one has a, a wide nice armrest on the right and on the left, well it's slightly you need to adjust to it because it's not wide enough. But then there is one. Best thing about the Opel Crossland is that it has two trim levels, I mean enjoy, funny name and innovation, but on both the trim levels everything that you expect, everything that is necessary, everything that's a value addition, it's all available across the board. Especially when it comes to the safety features, uh, even the, the lane departure warning uh, feature and the, the multi-angle very efficient camera, all these are standard on both trims. 
The same goes for the airbags, six in front and the side. Another really useful feature is a camera. And just when you back up and you get close, the camera switches its angle and you see from the top how close have you got for comfort. On these 16 inch wheels, the passenger ride quality uh, is only as firm as you expect in the segment. It's pretty comfortable. The buttons and the switches in the Crossland are pretty classic and uh, functional. Now, that makes the operation very smooth and simple. Uh, the buttons are all stacked up, and if you look at it, it's an 8-inch uh, touchscreen. Now, but the main controls are all done through the buttons uh, lined up uh, just below it. And the AC controls, very, very classic, simple. The handbrake is also a classic style. On the screen, you can actually control in a very European way uh, all that matters, those practical features. Like, for example, uh, in the door opening, you can set controls to open just the driver's door or the boot uh, lid. Uh, or you can even choose uh, different lightings, I mean, including the mood lighting, um, the, the headlight, uh, the guide me home function. Everything can be set and controlled from here. And safety features, you have driver attention warning as well. This is how you choose the radio station by a slider. Pretty simple, but the radio stations, some of them are quite erratic I mean, in, in terms of signals. There are two thoughtful features worth mentioning in this cabin design. One is the depressed dashboard so that you get a better view ahead. Two, the glove box has been pushed inside so that you have much more leg room. Clever. You'll see cubby holes all over on the door side, the dashboard and also the console. The difference that you'll find in the armrest storage is that it's pushed rearwards, so it's actually useful for the rear seat passenger as well. The seat can be extended. Nice. There's enough rear leg room. Pretty decent. And uh, even, you know, the, the vaulted ceiling kind of, you know, leaves a lot of headroom as well. It's kind of comfortable to sit in the middle. And because there is no AC vent in the rear, the knees are fine too. I've already told you that Opel has put all their eggs into both the Crossland baskets. So, how much do they cost, enjoy and innovation? 88,000 something and 91,000 something. The difference is 3,000 dirhams. So what does that extra 3,000 get you? Silver skid plates, roof rails, keyless entry and push button start. Your choice. If you're not bent upon a German car giving you a score of 10 in power and handling, Instead, if you're looking for a second car that focuses on convenience and safety features, I'll give you yet another reason to go for the Opel Crossland. The Crossland comes with a 5-year 100,000 km warranty and a 5-year 50,000 km service bundle. Now, which means if you're going to keep the car for 5 years and as a second car is going to run only 10,000 km a year, well, you're covered for the entire 5-year period nothing to worry about because the Opel Crossland is a good car.